Aloha and welcome to Connection to the Cosmos with your host, me, Dr. Lisa Thompson, where I have out of this world conversations with extraordinary people. And today I am so excited to have Steve Nowak on. You're going to love what he has to share with you. Um, really fascinating stuff. But first, a couple of announcements. I still have my free 20 minute meditative journey to meet your galactic family and guides on my website. So make sure that you grab that gift, mysticmanta.com or drlisajthompson.com. And it's right at the top. You cannot miss it. Um, also, my galactic retreat is here on the Big Island in Waikoloa Village, September 14th to the 17th. So if you are interested in really honing into your Claire's, doing things like telepathy, remote viewing, really connecting to higher dimensional beings and doing night sky watches every day so that you can see the kind of activity that I get to see all the time, then um, this retreat is for you. And I have all inclusive options and a la carte options as well. And if you're visiting the Big Island, definitely come see me on one of my Big Island UFO tours um, where you get to see the night sky in a whole new way using our advanced Gen 3 military night vision goggles. Now, something that happened one week ago, um, this is brand new. I was giving a presentation about my book, Connection to the Cosmos, at our local bookstore. They do a monthly um, local author kind of event. And so... I was talking about the extraterrestrials and my book, my experiences. And on the way home, it's about a 45 minute drive home from the bookstore to my house. And on the way home, I'm like, okay, guys, I've been talking about you. I always talk about you. Just, I want to see you. Just show me that you're there. And I do this all the time. And then they'll have blinks or other things that they'll show me. But the, I was really like, just show me. And the next day I was teaching about the Pleiadians. But so I got home. I walked down my driveway to the mailbox and above the tree line is this giant pulsating glowing object that it looked like a star, except for it was way bigger. And I could see the different like points coming off of it as it was pulsating. So the first thing I did was get my constellation app out to make sure that it was not a planet or a star because, you know, got to rule that out first and foremost. It wasn't moving, so I knew it was not potentially a satellite or airplane or you know something like that. And then I asked it, I was talking to it, and I asked it to show me to do something that a star wouldn't do or you know that a craft might do. And so what it did was it completely dimmed out, and then a few seconds later it came back on fully bright, and it did this four to five times to show me that it indeed was, you know, something that I thought it was a craft. And then I got my, I had my iPhone and I tried to take pictures of it and I didn't think they were turning out very well, but, I, and I was trying to get video of it. And what I was seeing with my visible eyes was completely different than what I, what my camera was picking up. But as some of you um, saw, and if you are watching this on YouTube or my podcast, you know, listening on podcast, go to one of my Facebook pages where I have this video. And I had my friend Chris zoom in. And with the video, you can fully see rotating action, very mechanical, rotating, um, pulsating kind of action. It's just incredible. So I've had just only one naysayer be like, you know, that's just an out of focus star. Stars don't move like that. They don't have that kind of structure and move like that. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. So now we're going to bring on Steve. Hi, Steve. Hello. How are you? <laughs> Good. Welcome. So I'm going to share um, a little bit about you for our audience. And because I just I can't wait to dive into our conversation. So Steve Nowak is a psychic and zero point healing practitioner. At a very young age, Steve was struck by a motor vehicle, and this event bioelectrically connected him to the quantum field. During Steve's near-death experience, he experienced sitting with a being comprised solely of light. The being of light revealed to Steve the quantum field and its connection to humanity's healing contained in their divine blueprint. Steve's gifts enable him to stimulate emotional and physical healing from any distance through quantum entanglement and photonics. 
Every living being emit, uh, emits biophotons or weak radiation generated as a bioelectrical field. And this is what links all living beings to collective consciousness. By using his unique gifts, he is able to create a zero point field or ground state for the bioelectrical nervous system and open pathways for healing. Steve began using his gifts to give back to humanity by first studying Usui, right? Usui Reiki yeah. over 10 years ago and has only grown from there. He now teaches, heals, and coaches clients from around the world. Steve works with hundreds of clients of all ages and backgrounds, guiding them on their journey of freedom from pain and trauma. He has a wide range of experience healing both spiritual and physical ailments from cancerous tumors to common injuries. Well, welcome, Steve. I'm so excited to have you here. And I can't wait again to dive into this conversation because um, several weeks ago, I had another guy who works with the zero point energy field and it was fascinating. And I think it's, you know, it, I learned about zero point energy probably 20, 25 years ago in my spiritual school. And it's now, all these years later, still not very mainstream, right? Mm -hmm. so before we get into that, I would love to know, like, your background. What kind of household, spiritual, religious, or something else? How did you grow up? And, I mean, the near death was at a young age, right? So tell us, tell us your backstory. Well, I grew up uh, pretty normal, not religious at all, not spiritual at all. Um, you know, parents divorced, you're kind of searching for yourself all the time and, and, and the things you didn't get. But, you know, um, the near death at four, when I had it, um, I was able to remember some of it eventually, but not all of it. And then later, that's when more started coming once the voice returned uh, that spoke with me during it. But my upbringing was uh, pretty normal. You know, it was kind of like, those 80 parents like go outside and play and you come back in, in for dinner time and hopefully you got all your limbs. You yeah. Know, Same that era. kind of deal. Yeah. <laughs> right. uh, we never went to church, never religious. Um, yeah. It just wasn't even a, a thought back then. Okay. Well, so then this near death experience at age four, how did you come about like realizing or remembering what it actually was? And then um, how did you get into this work that you do? Well, I, I knew something different had happened. That was kind of like, as I'm remembering it, I knew that it wasn't strictly an accident, that there was more to it. And I could feel that stirring, but it's like trying to remember what you had last week for lunch on a Wednesday. You know, that's what it felt like. So years went by um little signs here and there of the connectedness but nothing for me to really be aware of um and then eventually um i had a second accident when i was older and shortly following that accident as i was in the hospital that's when the voice returned and spoke to me again same voice said the same thing it said to me they said to me at four um and then that's when something cracked in my head to where all these visions started, all this information. Um, it was like I became a, a completely different person. Like every all my all my satisfaction in the things that I used to enjoy and do, I there was nothing to it anymore. It was empty, like an empty signal. And I had to correct that and correct those uh, inputs and outputs, basically. Okay. But what led me to the healing was shortly after this voice returning i was a store manager at a, a video game store pretty popular one um they're famous for stocks but um anyway so i was a video game store manager a woman had fallen down outside my store and she was elderly and she hit the cement she was in pain and at the time i wasn't much of a people person but i was kind of like almost fighting with myself it was that war in, in heaven in my heart for my character and my identity. So I went out of character and I placed my hand on her back and she looked at me and she said, I'm all warm and I don't have any pain. So I went back to my station once people came to pick her up and I thought about that long and hard. And then, you know, following that were all the like time loops where you would experience something 
and then you would experience it again and you already knew what was going to happen like i just lived this like 30 seconds ago not a deja vu okay like i literally walked through it and then walked through it again and i already knew what was going to happen okay. um very oh. weird experiences to make you think you're crazy put it that way for sure how old were you when this was going on when this was like my early 30s once it really started to ramp up um it felt like and the best way i can describe it to listeners or you is like you're a child and you're full of that excitement and that wonder of say waiting for christmas morning and you can't go to sleep or going out for the first time ever on your first date it was like that times a million in my stomach i and when this changed and this came and this voice entered me i immediately knew we were in a war for energy for hmm. human emotions and identity and they taught me about the neurological system human design those were some of the things i learned during my nd okay so i get what did you said the voice said the same thing to you both mm -hmm. times so what what was the that that it, it said to you what was the, well, the, f the first thing i remember is a blur and then witnessing my eyes i'm looking at myself blur going out into the road because i drove my big wheel out between two parked cars mm -hmm. and then a car coming down the road hit me and i went underneath the car and the first thing i remember is a blur and then seeing myself seeing my eyes roll in the back of my head and then everything went to black and came back and i was leaning over on someone to the side and my head was down and I remember thinking my very first thought being, who is this? Because it felt like a person. So I opened my eyes and as my head's down, I can see long, almost silver hair, white or silver, almost changed color, same color robe. And as I turn to look at them, that I see they have, they have a robe on, hooded robe, no face, only light where their face should be. Mm -hmm. And I asked them what had happened. They said, Stephen, you were in an accident. Everything's going to be all right. And that's exactly what they said to me when they returned. And it was like, okay. bam. And I knew instantly, you know, that was the voice. And then it was like the connection came back. And uh, I don't know, it just rocked my world, put it that way, to see beyond the physical reality and all the things they had shown me while I was during my NDE. And then after about quantum reality um yeah amazing can you, can you go into that a little more for us i would love i ever you know i i've heard other people's indie experiences and some of them are very similar but yours is a little bit different than what i've well, heard before they were like they showed me they brought they said it's not your time to go because i wanted to go there and i remember talking to, to them um and as i'm talking to them i'm thinking i'm not moving my mouth but we're talking, but I don't think about it much. I just think that and it passes. And as we're talking, I'm getting closer and closer to this face. Mm -hmm. And then I realize, okay, I'm starting to see, I guess what we would describe as heaven, because that's the only reference we have, where elderly are playing, kids are playing, the flowers are alive, the colors are alive. Everything it, it has its own energy. And when it hits me, I immediately know there's no pain there, there's no suffering, there's no none of those things could exist there it wasn't that they didn't they couldn't mm -hmm. and i wanted to go and they said it's not your time we have something else to show you and before you know it i'm in almost like if you were to see a blueprint of a building drawn on a blueprint and i'm seeing through material material reality and i could see blueprint and structures behind this reality and they said your thought builds reality your thought seeds into your heart and becomes expressed through your body. And that gives order to matter. And they showed, showed me that when you arrive on this planet, this earth, you're a perfect stream, a beam of love. And they showed me in the center of like a medicine wheel. Mm -hmm. And they explained to me as humans go throughout their life, they diminish this frequency by spending their energy that, basically goes to the quantum field and comes back through them and cycles through their system. And now they're, they're, they're having their perception and their, their reality through their nervous system. 
and that's what's manifesting their world. And they said, you spend this energy, it gets deposited in the field, the signal comes back to you, and the scope allows you to have an energetic relationship, an emotional relationship with people, places, and things. Mm -hmm. And I was seeing like memories almost deposited in a screen, and I understood instantly, they explained to me that these memories were data, and that this was a deposit of data, uh, this experience contained data, but that's what it was at the root, it was data. And that we can gain these, pull all these uh, strings or extensions, because when they showed it, I, energy was coming out from my center to the outer rim, okay. forming images, and they had strings attached to them. So they said, humanity is, is going to be getting these back. They're gonna be going through an evolution and ascension, basically, timelines and a lot of these things that exist through us are going to be converging into a singularity and that's they also told me that singularity is the christ awakening within us they showed me the trinity um they showed me that it was a circuit of life force energy that we can plug into that that really has to do with time space and matter uh three different levels um Time being when we are, space being where we are, matter being what we are. You know, I instantly knew myself as this one energy and I, I craved it and wanted to find it again. Uh, yeah, that's a lot, I know. But yeah. uh, there, there's still more too. It's just. I, well, I love that. And um, what you're describing is stuff that I did, um, it's stuff that my channel teacher was teaching us at our spiritual school of enlightenment, you know, when I was in the eighties and onward. And um, so I very much resonate, even though I have not had my own near death experience. So I theoretically, I understand, but I'm sure um, experiencing what you've experienced, getting to see it from that level is a whole different world in terms of embodying that consciousness. And yeah, so- they- basically telling us you know you're the creator yeah. in that body and you need to realize that and and give order and and shift matter and timelines etc yes well and yes i've been learning that i create my reality since i was 13 and even though i know it it doesn't mean i always consciously do it because mm-hmm. Now my humanness gets in the way or other you know the people places things times and events around me get in the way of me really doing that so how has seeing this experiencing this how have you then been creating your reality embodying as much charge as i possibly can and that's something else they taught me they taught me transmutation and alchemy uh, which started my road of basically purifying any part of myself that was not love and learning how to embody basically the spirit of the Christ within me. That's what I pursued, which was love, you know, in essence, manifested into reality. But it helped me gain a a new awareness to give me this, this awareness from these beings and from the Arcturians and others that came after that we were like a computer and we were inside somewhat of a quantum experience and that we had control, we could regain control, put it that way, um, to manifest basically that charge that would bring both our positive and negative together, help us achieve a zero point field, which is an individual expressed state, meaning I'm no longer subject to the need for your approval or your approval or your need to approve my identity. You know, we begin to know ourselves as energy. Mm, beautiful. Okay, so you just mentioned the Arcturians. So that's the primary group that I am connected with. And one of the things that I know about them is that they are they resonate at a Christ conscious level, Christ Buddha conscious level. And so I would love what's been your experience with yeah, well, <laughs> the, the first time they showed up, I told them to go away because I was going through a real hard transition. That was shortly after this voice returned. Um, and I was trying to separate reality from reality, right? And 
when I woke up and this voice returned and this energy started in me and I started having all this, like, why is all this stuff in my head? You know, mm -hmm. I awoke to all my quantum projections in the field around me and I was trying to separate them because I could see them moving around. I could hear what they were speaking and it took me a while to figure out that's the way I used to talk to myself. And then it, something clicked and I was like, these are coming from me and these are my old manifestations so that I can basically discharge them and expand. Mm -hmm. So they showed up during that time and I'm like, they, they're like, we're from the galactic federation or, uh, you're part of the divine council of nine. We're, we're here to help you evolve because you're going to help humanity evolve and ascend into their, you know, singular aspect of God, singular expression, uh, during this time. And I'm like, yeah, go away, whatever. So they did. And I thought about it afterwards. I'm like, man, that was crystal clear. That was clearer than a lot of other things I heard. So I was like, all right, well, if you want to come back, come back again. And they did. And they talked more about what I would have to do in my purification and my sacrifices and, and the things that I knew I should have been doing up to that point that I wasn't. Okay. Can you give us some examples of changes that they, that you need uh, to make? Not, that you giving up patterns, habits, and cycles, and pretty much any toxins that I was in taking from this world as best I could in my time, because everybody gets there in their time. Right. You know, we're all learning our way back to love as an yeah. identity. So for me, it was like energy drinks at the time. It was a lot of other things that really contradicted with who I was and what I was becoming and doing, mm -hmm. um, because it was outside of my identity. And you know, they taught me and I realized anything outside of my identity as love is an attachment. As soon as I identify with something outside of the center point, now I've created an attachment. Okay, beautiful. Well, and my experience with them, because um, I, I understand who I am as mm -hmm. my Arcturian self, and now I channel that energy, that um, healing, the messages, and it um, yeah, it's all about love and unity. So totally on the same page with you. And, and then they would uh, appear in, in healing sessions after, uh, as well as other races who I've never seen. I'm like, what is this thing? All right, are we going to do battle here? And no, it was, it was friendly and the person had prior connections. So they knew as soon as I mentioned it, they knew. Yeah. Um, and then many lucid dreams where the Arcturians brought me on these ships where I was in a white slick suit. I had no hair. Mm -hmm. Other people were in white suits. I was on a table. There was another one where there was a big room and there was children in pods. And they were highly intelligent children between the ages of like seven and 11. And I could feel it just by walking by them. I could feel it now. Okay. So what other kind, do you know who some of the other um, races were that you were experiencing and working with? Yeah, one of them was a man, like a praying mantis race, the mantids. I love yeah. it. <laughs> Another one was were that lion-looking being. I think they're the Lyrans. And yeah. I think I saw one or two others that I, I have trouble remembering because it was so so long ago. But a, as I'm experiencing this, I'm a skeptic naturally, and I'm going through my life, and I'm like. Yeah, okay, whatever. And then it's again and again and again, and it won't stop knocking on my door. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, do you work with any of these beings now? Or, mm -hmm. okay, so I would love, so, you know, we've got the zero point energy healing. So can you, I guess, give our audience a little more information about how you work with that? Because Zero point energy, it's its energy all around us, right? Yeah, energy all around us, energy within us. The idea is, though, is that it's being used. And, and now we're getting into the age of quantum computers that are sending photons through the quantum field, the uh, launch of AI. And you're not going to want that stuff in your nervous system. That's why it's important to claim your energetic sovereignty over your system because you are a computational system. And now I lost your question. Okay, <laughs> well, so <laughs> zero point energy, 
and we can get back to AI um, after that because um, that's an interesting concept of what you just said. So, so I guess. Oh yes, previously, previously yeah. untapped energy. But the idea is to claim it for yourself before all these other things, fields, energies, claim it and use it. And it's not like, okay, if you don't claim it, it's gone. But the yeah. idea is to claim it and use it for yourself because it holds tremendous potential when you tap into it. Okay. So now, is this something that you teach your clients how to access themselves or do, is it, they have to come to you to get the healing or um, how to I, work? Yeah, I can definitely jumpstart them because I can generate a high charge and then Basically, what I do is connect to them through quantum entanglement, and this causes their nervous system to have an action potential. So now their cellular memory, which mm -hmm. is linked to their subconscious programs and mind, starts to basically be discharged. So I teach them, but I also tell them that they can do whatever I can do. They can claim this as truth for themselves, that they are energy the energy of love in the flesh fully manifested. And as you start the signal here and it goes to your heart and it's expressed fully through all your neural pathways, that's cleaning. Now you're talking about roto rooter and you're cleaning all the neural pathways. If you can believe it and embody it as truth. So claiming your zero point energy, claiming your divine blueprint, which was something else I was shown during my NDE was we all have a blueprint that we can claim, but we need to do it with our free will and identify with it like we've identified with other things here, that this promise or this image is always available to us. It doesn't rust away. Okay. Can you just describe what a divine blueprint is for someone who may not have ever heard that before? And, and, and what do you mean by claiming it just for, yeah, for people being like, okay, what does that even mean? Well, claiming it means identifying with it, saying that's me, okay. that's that, and, and knowing it enough to where you feel it cycle through your body. The same way you know, you know how to tie your shoes. You know water's wet. You know fire's hot. You know the dog needs to go for a walk. Look at it factualized. Um, what was the other question? Oh, the divine blueprint. So what what was shown to you about that? Um, that it's like a file on a computer. To be honest with you and you can restore your computer back to its original state. Um, it's basically pure love and you can embody that. And as it integrates with you, as you believe you are it, it will integrate with you. And that's your healing, that's your expansion, that's your release from the monkey mind and all the things we got going on inside us. That gives order to matter, put it that way. Okay, so you mentioned that you've been able to help like clients cure from cancerous tumors and other ailments. So mm -hmm. can, yeah. Can you share some of those kinds of stories and how yeah. this energy healing has helped you and others? Oh, it's, it's helped many people in many ways. I get people who, you know, they have tumors or like a, a mother will message me and a young child who is on oxygen and he's only got, one lung working and and the energy because and I, I think the science is getting into cellular memory being passed through genes now too mm -hmm. so what we're doing is we're, we're we are releasing the cellular memory expanding life force energy and it's actually just connecting people to more more of what they already are and that's that's their healing is flowing in a more natural state mm -hmm. But there's stories where people come to me with entities, uh, demonic, uh, all kinds of things. So it's a gambit of issues. But, you know, for the most part, they all show great success. I had one woman who made an appointment with me. And before we got to work together, and I think I just posted this, she said, I thought about the appointment and then I felt something release in my stomach. And she said, I knew I was healed and she has medical evidence. She went to the doctor, got an en en endoscopy, I think she was scheduled for, um, and everything was cleared. So it's really just the power of your mind 
and completing the embodiment and knowing that you're part of this universal energy and you can kind of discharge any false identities because that's where it comes in disease anything in this world is going to try to get at you from your identity and your feelings that's why it's important to know how to i control the flow in my in my central nervous system nobody else mm -hmm. okay so um have you experienced because i i've known people who you know they they have experienced we'll call it miraculous healing even though the body has that ability mm -hmm. but then they go maybe back to the old thought patterns that might have created that illness in the body and so then it comes back have you had your clients experience that or are they able to keep in this new neural pathway of i my body just works <laughs> no i think i think every healer has experienced those clients um to where they embody a little bit of density afterwards mm -hmm. and then that's part of their sacred teaching. That's part of your initiation. The dark is here to initiate us if you know how to let it teach you. Mm -hmm. you it teaches you and it moves and that's its only job. But it's yeah. when we start to get into the monkey mind and not do our practices and exercises that we get bound by it. Um, but that's the perfect opportunity to put your tools into work, to witness your own power, to step in there and say, wow, I am this. And I can give order to this system. I'm not a slave to my feelings or to events that happen to me. Beautiful. Yeah, that's something I actually have been um, channeling, been teaching, been all these galactic sessions that I'm doing currently, working with the different ET groups. Um, just, yeah. So I'm on the Claiming same your authority. It is. Yeah, your authority through all, because you have that authority over all realms through the Christ, through the singularity, through the law of one just a matter of whether you believe it or not you know right and i i love what you just said because i i completely this has been my experience of the dark the polarity that we experience is simply a mechanism of evolution for us yeah it's contrast but if you become if you let it shrink down your your neural pathways and you hold on to it then it's going to give you a narrow vision and you're not going to really see you know, take command. I teach my clients, command your consciousness and speak to it and tell basically anything that's not love that you're in control and you're here to teach me. Yes. And yeah, that I have a lot of people that come on um, our UFO tours that don't know as much about this kind of stuff. And they're always like, well, what about, you know, what about the negative ETs or the, the bad ones or the like you mentioned demonic energy and i'm just like you have full control over mm -hmm. what is in your world you just have to remember that you do and claim it yeah with that it's all gone no more scapegoat it's like with the power of transmutation and alchemy you you have the power to really choose to be a victim and allow it to consume you or yeah. to take care of it it's just whether we're not taught these things like, I wish I was taught about my nervous system and, and how to control my perception of reality and things like that in school. You know, the embodiment of, of certain frequencies and energies and because they create false selves and false narratives that as quantum energy, it's not going to die. It's not going to get destroyed. It's going to play like a program. Yeah, exactly. So I'm thinking of someone um, that I, I know kind of at a distance who keeps recreating these victim kind of scenarios and has become extremely isolated. And they're really, you know, they, I had a brief conversation a while ago with them about they're trying to not be in this 3d reality, but they just like they're skipping steps They're Yeah. They're. And so for someone like that, that is constantly getting bullied, in the victim mode um if someone were in that situation and came to you how would you work with them the first thing i would do is uh let them know it's safe to feel and help them create a sacred space within themselves that they can use once they leave where it's a sacred space to feel and to teach them that you want to form this 
back and forth between yourself and the quantum field, between yourself and the creator, because that's going to open your pathways up to allow yourself to feel love in a safe place that doesn't need anything from you. And this will also awaken your pathways and make you aware of what's not love on the outside of you. Because the more of that divine highway you start sending signals to, the more it's going to come back to you. You're going to embody it. And then you're going to know on the outside what resonates, what doesn't. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a lot easier to choose without even thinking about it twice. Um, once you're embodied with enough. But it's a game of building charges, okay? Yeah. We're talking about discharging negative charges from the cellular memory and now building a positive charge. And of course I would guide them through that, but that's the basis of it is you want to charge yourself up enough, almost like one of those radios that works without batteries. Okay. You yeah. wind it and wind it and wind it. You want to give yourself a large enough charge to where that's going to shift your, your dimension and your awareness. Um, because that's going to basically awaken your system. You're looking to awaken your system and Become aware so you can kind of give order to your reality. Okay, if I don't want to experience this anymore, what can I do? I can shift my charge, my frequency, and then it's going to be a lot easier to have that decisiveness and clarity mm -hmm. and guidance, more importantly, guidance. Yeah. So um, when clients come to you, do they come to you one time? Is it over a series of weeks or months or... Like how long does it take for this kind of healing to manifest? It really depends on the client. Uh, lately, the people have been coming and they're having amazing, like wild, you know, manifestation healing for themselves. But then if a person is not giving the time to connect, to keep that energy flowing through their system, they're going to be back in a few months if they're very self-defeated but you get other people who are very eager they want to learn so they mm -hmm. want to come back in three weeks they want to but i always tell people a minimum of two weeks then i have people whose lives get totally transformed i never see them again and they're they're connected and they're off doing something similar to basically helping people heal mm -hmm. i think we're all doing it through a different lens but uh, the times vary really depending on a client mm -hmm. okay when, because you're working in the quantum field, you can work remotely. You can work with anyone around the world, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And that's what I love about it. And I've had clients in person, same client in person, same client on Zoom, and they wanted Zoom because they're like, there's no loss. Uh, I was able to relax more. Um, so yeah, I, I work with people all over the world. I, I think we can all move through this quantum field to, we have to achieve our zero point and, and connect our mind and our heart and then apply that will. Mm -hmm. Well, that is, you know, I know a lot of people struggled through the pandemic, but for me, one of the beautiful things, gifts of it, was actually realizing um, how connected in the world I really am, um, you know, and not needing to be so physical in reality with people. So. You know, most of my tribe, they're they're all over the place. They're not anywhere near me. <laughs> so. It was definitely an amazing time period because you got to see who had faith, who didn't, who aligned where, who was embodying what. Yeah, I saw a, a lot of things revealed, you know, but it was a time where I was like, I felt incredibly lucky that I had the connection that I did. Mm -hmm. um, and it just made me even even more grateful. Yeah, same. Well, and I mean, like, I moved to Hawaii in the middle of the pandemic, <laughs> bought a house sight unseen. So it allowed us, our family, the freedom to make mm -hmm. different choices than just, you know, being stuck. And so, you know, whether, no matter what anyone thinks about the pandemic and where it came from, but like for me, I, I had a beautiful evolution from mm -hmm. the experience of it. So. Oh, me too, man. I was like, I felt liberated because all the things that I was talking about, like in 2012, I'm like, we're going to need some food. We're going to need this. So we're going to, this is going to happen. Society's going to go into chaos and everybody's like, you're a nutbag. And, you know, here we are. And I'm actually, you know, all the people that wanted me to see a shrink when I woke up are now just kind of, they, 
can't say anything, you know, because I'm doing it for work. Yeah. And that's the thing, people who are just awakening, you need to understand that your words aren't going to do anything. You, they need, people who are, are still asleep need to see your actions and the change. And that's what's going to change them. It's not going to be words. Yeah. I, yeah, I totally agree. And because there are a lot of people out there that just talk, 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 and they're, they're not showing anything with that talk. And so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, totally agree. So now you call yourself also a psychic. So how do you use that ability in the work that you do? Actually, I, I, that's an old bio. I actually took that out, but that's okay. Because I don't like the term because it comes with so many attachments. Um, mm -hmm. The idea is everybody's psychic. You, yes. you have a, a system within you to receive data and send data and you do it all the time. It's just, are you aware you're doing it? You know? Right. Exactly. Well, and that's, that's what I've been sharing. And when I bring people on the show like this, I've had a lot of psychic mediums and they all say the same thing. Like everyone has this ability. It's just a matter mm -hmm. of, you know, are you working that muscle? Yeah. Are you opening those pathways? Are you embodying a high enough charge to send it through your, your body and, and charging yourself up? Yeah. So with, with the work that you do with the zero point, have you been able with changing some of the habits, like you mentioned energy drinks and just changing some of the things that you were doing, have you been able to maintain your own like kind of health and oh, energy yeah. in your body? Yeah. Yeah, it's been a, a system kind of where I'm starting to learn when I embody density based on how my body feels. And in my early 20s, you know, I was on pain medication after all these accidents, stayed on it too long, needed right. it to function to go to work. And this energy got me through that and understanding, okay, there's something going on here. When I embody emotions that I'm not processing, when I have an interaction, I would immediately make the correlation that my body was in pain or I felt pain. And then I would go process out these emotions. There goes the pain. So now that I figured out the system of commanding pain in my body. So it was just a, uh, a journey of figuring things out. Yeah. So um, have you written any of your stories about any of this? Yeah, I have a lot of notebooks, let's say that. And I'm, I'm, I'm to the point where I think I'm so busy now that yeah. I'm going to take some time off in April and probably that's when I'm going to start writing it. Like I started it and then started it and started okay. it again. Because I'm uh, feeling a book here. So that's why that's right. Oh, yeah, it's, it's coming. Yeah. The thing is, what, what I'm, I'm a, I learned by doing. Mm -hmm. So I guess you could say I'm a hard learner. So as I'm doing the healings and, and doing all the work, I'm actually learning. And this is teaching me what to write, what to include, because I want to put something in there that helps people self-cleanse their so central nervous system. Yeah. Because I know what we're facing in society is neural hijacking. That's a neuroscience term for when your emotions override your rational thought and that we can discharge this part of ourselves. So I want to include some of my story and some workable thing. Yeah. So can you go a little bit more into that? Because I know like we, we as humans, we do have emotions and we mm -hmm. are meant to experience emotions. And so talk more about the rational versus the emotional piece that you were just sharing. Well, we're back to cellular memory uh, because the traumatic things we experience, the emotions of the dressed, um, the overthinking, it's going somewhere. Where is it going? It's going, it's getting stored in your cellular memory and your subconscious. And now this is working like bandwidth, a band of information now to work. And, and it's creating an attachment, false identities. So I'm losing the base question here. Okay. So, well, I'm curious because I mean, we're meant to feel our emotions. Oh, okay. So our, well, it's up to you. you. You can feel your anger and rage and hate all you want, but do you want to? Okay. So it's interesting because, I mean, then there's another school of thought where, you know, being in a neutral state mm -hmm. is um, the best place to be. So with there's conflicting information 
from different spiritual teachers and well for me it's all down to the cellular memory right and that now you 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 have a band of information running through your subconscious do you want that band of information there do you want if it's junky that's the idea we're about moving everything that's not love at this mm -hmm. time on the planet then i can tell you those beings of light are not taking prisoners it's coming yeah. This light is going to expand and it's going to transmute everything it possibly can. Yeah. Oh, I totally agree. And um, so is that free will to embody that and want an entity to stay with you? Yeah, probably. Is it the best for you? Probably not. Okay. When you're saying entity, which kind of entities are you talking about? Self created. And then whatever latches onto that to feed and, or harvest energy. Because if you're stuffing down emotions and experiences and never expressing them, that's quantum energy. It's not going anywhere. It's going to okay. build up. And now you're looking at a, an explosion of the demonic into the physical world, basically. Okay. So that, so yes, stuffing the emotions and not expressing them. So having the emotions, but expressing them and letting them flow through you as opposed to keeping them. Yeah. Tight. Expressing or processing. Yeah. Because, you know, yeah. we're not just talking about projecting on other people project expression. We're talking about learning how to process things clearly as well. And obviously we're not in a system it's designed to let us do that. No, I know. So, um, how do you see things shifting in that way? where we do become a society that allows that. I see a large part of society, um, you know, continuing to grow with that. But then in, instead of people like they once were, like a lot of people are getting tired of the darkness. So the new tactic of basically the, whatever energy is against the light, you know, dark collect is going to be technology. That That's where we're heading. We're heading into a, a technology into our body into our realities they're going to want to distract people off this path of finding their true identity mm -hmm. so i see part of society you know going the more natural and in a way that where it's valuable to sit down and have dinner with your family and to love them during that and to slow down to the pace more of nature as opposed to rush 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 like you're a robot yeah. Okay. Well, and I appreciate that. I mean, that's, that's what I've been able to do with this move to Hawaii is really completely change the way that I do my life. And it's a matrix, you know, it's a matrix of thought mm -hmm. and thoughts. You have enough of patternized thoughts. They're going to create structure and a house that you're going to live in and you're creating your reality from your thoughts. So mm -hmm. getting out of the matrix, achieving that identity within you as energy and not trading that or compromising it to anybody for approval that's important because you're out of that matrix now yeah you can't be labeled because the world's going to want to label you or program you as soon as you walk out into it they're oh you're this you're that you're not enough this you're not enough that guess what i already know who i am right well and i that's something that i've been learning over the last i guess 15 years is what other people think of me as none of my business mm-hmm and um it's way easier now because yeah I it's hard to get out of that resonation at first but once you release and you're like you know i'm having a sacred experience with me and my creator everybody else is just a character yeah then it you know it's, it's a lot very interesting to observe yourself yeah when you know coming in to this human experience and i mean for me it was like people pleasing and really getting my worth from what other people thought of me and needing to be a high mm -hmm. achiever to feel like I was worthy. Um, so really working through those kinds of things to come out and be like, I'm awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely hard. And, and I'll give your viewers a quick tidbit, like walk into the bathroom and say, I am beautiful. Bing, because you have a reflection opposite of you, you can instantly feel how much you believe it and how much doesn't. And that's what that Christed energy is in you that helps you instantly have that knowing and discernment. And, um, you know, it's, there was something else I was going to speak on too, but I lost it. I forgot. It'll come oh, back. um, 
the, the, the latest information was that a lot of us are quantum leaping here from future timelines back to correct timelines now, which, yeah. ex which when I got that information, it was like, wow, because everything else started to make sense about how I had all this information in me. And, um, apparently the singularity was achieved and, and we were coming back, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I mean, all timelines exist in the quantum realm and, and even as Lisa and Steve right here, it, we can quantum leap into other timelines ourselves. And George in the back there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, well, do yeah, you I've, I, I guess the one more thing about the quantum leaping yeah. is, you know, I realized that we can change our character at any time and this can manifest a new reality. If yeah. we can believe, you know, people generally have a part of them. They, you know, I want to be this, mm -hmm. but I am this and I was this. Now you singularize those and fully believe that you are the character you want to be until it feels and completes through your body as a signal and a feeling and embody that long enough and you will be that character. Yes. Actually, that's one of the things that um, the Arcturian part of me channels um, in terms of like, yeah, focus on what you actually do want to mm -hmm. create. Um, see it, embody it, like feel it as if it already is and hold that so Yeah, much. like you just read it out of a book and feel like, that truth. Yes. Yeah, and I just got the goosies on that. So um, we all get to choose what it is we want to live. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So what what are you creating right now in your life? Gosh, right now I'm hoping to create some sort of, I suppose, healing ministry where people can connect with God in a non definitive way where the world didn't decide what it is for them. They can strictly connect with energy that, and that part of themselves, mm -hmm. that, that part of their self that's, that's within them and they can feel it and come alive again. You know, I want to have a space of land where people can come no matter what race, religion, or gender they are. It doesn't matter. Yeah. The one thing we have in common, and this is why society wants us to focus on things surface level, like skin and all that, is our heart mm. but we have to go inside to find it and you know a place like that to where people can embody that energy beautiful when well, you're based in connecticut you mm -hmm. said i know some of my listeners are in your area so um now we talked about remote healing and stuff but you you do work with people in person as well i do in person in home right now i gave up my space when covid came around because i was just paying it for nothing and i haven't really found a suitable place or needed to get a new place yet so i'm like you know it's in the cards but i just i'm doing mostly remote and in home now not too many in home but okay well so the land that you're talking about to have for people to come to would that be in the northeast area that you're in i'm hoping to keep it in the northeast okay you know um, I'm, I'm really hoping to because it's near and dear to me, you yeah. know, to be able to walk out in that sacred autumn feeling or, or whatever it may be, Beautiful. you know, sacred, sacred land where, where even people mind their thoughts when they walk on the property. Cause if they don't, the thought of police will be there <laughs> the, and an angel will jump you from the tree. <laughs> right. Well, so how can people find you? What's the uh, best way for them to work with you and find you? Best way, honestly, is to go through my site and book an appointment just because I receive so many emails. Mm -hmm. But if you want to email me, it's Trinity Healing Reiki at gmail.com. Or you can go through my site, which is Trinity Quantum Health.com. And then there's a few different um times for appointments and like group sessions things like that okay i like the name um trinity my i got to um get the name of my guardian angel her name is trinity <laughs> oh wow for me they showed me that it was a circuit like i was telling you before and what i do is i guide my clients to ask the holy breath to come down through the crown connect to that christ that's within them expand 
and then I ask God or source to surround them. And now we're creating a field. And then everything within that field, we start to gather up in a lower charge, mm-hmm. um, do transmutation, you know? Yeah, beautiful. Well, any, any final words of wisdom for the audience before we end here? Yeah, I would say know yourself into being and don't trade your identity. Um, have your boundaries about what you allow into your nervous system. The people that love you will respect that. The people that don't will go away like they're supposed to. You know, um, know your identity as the energy of love in human form, having an experience. And that's it. You're blameless, you're guiltless, all these other things when you come back into that present moment of now. And how you do that is by recognizing yourself simply as energy. And this helps you also see other people in a more empathetic way as energy and the things they've gone through in their lives. Yes. Um, I can speak to that. Of In my younger years before I went through some of the harder lessons that I did, I definitely had more judgment of people and their experiences of life. And now coming through that, um, really like you're doing, embodying this love mm-hmm. aspect and really being able to see it from that higher perspective with non-judgment. So Yeah, for sure. And uh, become the programmer of your subconscious because your subconscious mind is powerful, more powerful than your conscious mind, and it's running all the time. So become yeah. the programmer and make statements in your consciousness like, I am healing. I am succeeding. I asked the universe to show me more good things and, and just, you know, play with it. This is play. This is not the end of everything. We're eternal. Exactly. Well, Steve, this has been such a pleasure. Thank you so much for sharing your healing, your wisdom, your experiences. And um, for those of you watching or listening, would love any comments, feedback, and thank you for listening and watching. And until next time on Connection to the Cosmos. Thank you.